You know, on any given day, we cram our brains full of lots of useless information, stuff that we really never need to remember again, like where we parked at the grocery store, what we ate for breakfast, or who we listened to in the radio on the way into work. In fact, if we kept all of that information in our brains day after day, we would be certifiably nuts, right? Our brains would be so crammed full of information, we couldn't function. So our brains do us the favor of cleaning out all of those useless memories, usually at night while we're sleeping. Our brains are in fact really good at forgetting, which keeps us sane, but it's not so great for learning. How do we help information go from short-term working memory into long-term memory? Now, how, how exactly does that happen? The answer is simple. For the most part, it's really just one way. It's through repetition. We have to go on more than one date, so to speak, with our new learning in order for it to find a home in our long-term memory. And these dates must be spread over time. Uh, a whirlwind romance just won't do. Numerous studies, in fact, show that mass practice or cramming really doesn't work. Yeah, we might feel like we've learned something after an all-night cram session. And if we're lucky, maybe that's, that's true long enough to get us through the test. But usually within a few days, we will, we will have forgotten most of what we've learned. That's probably why we find that students will typically forget 90% of what they've learned in school just 30 days later. And it brings us to another principle for designing learning that sticks, which is giving students opportunities to practice new learning over time, not just in a single class or on a single homework assignment, but in multiple sessions spread out over days or even weeks. So here's one last big idea from the science of learning that's important to consider when designing your student learning experiences, and it's this. Memory storage is not the same thing as memory retrieval. You've stored the memory, but you don't have enough hooks to retrieve it. And often that's because you've only learned it in one way, or in one setting, or in one application. So that can happen if we read a book and never think about how it applies to our own lives, or we, you know, we work a math formula, but we never really think about how we might apply that to a real life problem. So if, if we want students to learn something deeply, to be able to both store and retrieve it, we need them to practice it as well as to extend and apply it, to keep coming back to that new learning in multiple ways and multiple times so they, they create richer, more complex connections to it in their brain.